Merci. Merci. Thank you. Gentlemen, good afternoon, mesdames et messieurs, bon après-midi. Mon nom est Mariana Murat, je suis... Good afternoon, my name is uh, Mariana Murat. I am the chief senior director of the corporate communication of the... It is a pleasure to welcome you again this year to our annual public meeting. C'est un plaisir de vous accueillir encore cette année à notre... It is a pleasure to welcome you again at this annual public meeting. Année consécutive. And it is the seventh consecutive year that uh, we are having uh, this meeting uh, through webcast to be able to reach as many Canadians as possible. If you are following this webcast through the link that we have sent you, you can choose the language that you prefer by clicking on the headphone icon on your uh, screen through the link. You can also follow this uh, webcast live as we switch from French to English. For those of you who follow us on Facebook, I'm sorry, there is no translation available. Link we provided to you. You can choose your preferred language by clicking on the headphone icon that appears on your screen. You can also watch the webcast in its original broadcast language as we'll be switching from French to English. For those of you who are watching via Facebook, we are not, unfortunately, providing any translation. So over the next hour, you will be hearing from Françoise Bertrand, chairperson of the board of directors, Cynthia Garneau, our president and CEO, and Patricia Jasmet, our chief financial officer. We will be reviewing the financial results from 2018 and the first quarter of 2019. And we will also discuss progress on some of our key initiatives over the past year. Following the speeches, we will be answering some of the most popular questions you've sent us. Les réponses aux questions que nous avons reçues. The answers to the questions that we've received will be published on our website during the next uh, weeks in the next uh, few days. Uh, this uh, webcast that you are following today will be available in a subtitle version on uh, Via Rail's YouTube channel. Je Françoise Bertrand, chairperson of the board of director of Via Rail Canada. I should have a thermometer to uh, register the heat of uh, the applause. Third uh, annual public assembly of uh, Via Rail. Um, merci d'être présent. C'est vraiment. Thank you for being here. It is uh, very important. There is a lot of preparation that uh, goes into this uh, meeting this afternoon, and I thank you very much for being with us. Uh, to look uh, together at uh, 2018, but also we will uh, peek a little into uh, the year 2019. I would like to thank, start by thanking you for uh, 2018, which was a wonderful year. As you know, we celebrated Via Rail's 40th anniversary, and uh, I would uh, like to also have these uh, 40 years. But these are 40 years that have allowed us to look at four decades, not only looking at uh, passenger rail, but also the different steps of Via Rail history. We celebrated uh, not only here in Montreal, where we got together, but where you are all through the magic of uh, technology from coast to coast. This anniversary has a twofold significance to bring back on and look back on the highlights of Via Rail's history. And we are also facing forward into a new era of passenger transportation. We held a range of activities with our customers and employees uh, through diverse activities and even contents, uh, contests that some of you have won. We also launched uh, a new communication platform, Love the Way, which guides our way of thinking, acting, and innovating, and acts as a rallying force around two of our top priorities, the joy of travel and sustainable mobility, which is a bit uh, the motto of Rio Rail, but that I wanted to be the 
motto of everyone. With a great sense of pride, whether we're an employee or we are a member of the board of VRIL, pride is really at the center of the feeling we have when we come to VRIL in the morning. Invigorated by a strong growth of both revenue, up 7.4%, and of ridership, up 8% in 2018. But what's really fabulous for us, it's not an exceptional strictly in 2018. It is since 2014 that VRL numbers have constantly gone up. And that's under the leadership of our outgoing president, Yves Desjardins Siciliano. On behalf of the board of directors and all of our employees at VIA, I'd like to thank him for shifting VIA Rail's focus on the client and for making sustainable mobility a central pillar of the corporation's approach. And I think we can. And he might be watching, and we say hello, and thank you. En tant que fiduciaire de notre organisation, en 2018... In 2018, our board of directors was very present and busy with a number of major projects and decisions, respecting the important principle, no one's hands up, and we accompanied management and the whole VRIL team. During the year, we've supported the activities through six committees, which follow the strategic planning or orientations and management priorities. The committee committees are audit and pension investment, major projects, human resources, commercial business and stakeholders relations, and also that of fleet modernization. At the beginning of the year, because of the extremely high importance of the fra high frequency rail project, we created a committee to supervise this project that we hope will enter into a new phase very soon or before the end of 2019. Je suis très fière de dire it was time to change the rules of parity. And it is a first for VIA, but I would think for most of Crown Corporation and even for public companies, to have at the same time a chairwoman and a CEO who's a woman. And I think that's a really <laughs> interesting first. But it's not all. We have, as you know, 13 members of the board. And with the new appointments that have been done by the government lately, we are now on the board, eight women and five men. So I think a hand of applause should go to our colleagues, men, who will have the <laughs> opportunity to work with women. <laughs> I would like to introduce to you uh, my friends, uh, colleagues, members of the board. They're, most of them are present today, and I will not follow what I should, which is the order in uh, the uh, alphabet, but rather the way they are sitting in front of me, if I may. I hope it doesn't create too problem with the camera. So, Jonathan Goldblum from Montreal, Quebec. Jane Moat uh, from Toronto, Ontario. Glenn Rainbird from Belleville, Ontario. Gail Stephens from Victoria, British Columbia. Uh, from the old crowd, I mean the ones who were already on the board, three are missing because they're uh, caught in two meetings right now. Well, actually, I think there are four missing. Uh, there's uh, Danielle Gallivan from Nova Scotia. Kenneth Then from British Columbia. Kathy uh, Vig from um, Quebec, and Geneviève Tanguay, I haven't seen her, so I suppose she's still on a phone call with her daily job. So uh, to all, I want to say how much uh, I value their contribution to the board. 
But in March, as I was saying, there are newcomers to our board. And the government of Canada announced the nomination uh, of our new president, who I'll introduce to you uh, shortly. But three new administrators were also appointed for a four-year term. And they are Grant Christoph from British Columbia, Miranda Keating Erickson from Alberta, originally from Montreal, and uh, Vian Timmins from Saskatchewan. So to all, I say welcome. We'll be working very hard, and, uh, but we're delighted to have additional help of uh, your uh, contribution is welcome. And uh, we've already seen in the first meeting we had in the last three days uh, that you'll be very valuable to the Via Rail family. On behalf of the board, I'd like to take this opportunity also to bid farewell to our colleague Ramona Mattery from Vancouver, British Columbia, who recently completed her term with Via Rail. And I'm sure she's watching, unless she's giving a class or consulting with the client. But uh, thank you, Ramona, and we hope to see you in Halifax in August. En 2018, notre conseil a accompagné avec vigilance le déploiement de la modernisation de Via Rail et veillé à l'avancement. In 2018, our board's thoughtful support was essential to the rollout and progress of the organization's modernization project to encourage more Canadians to choose Via Rail. We concentrated a majority of our efforts in the following areas: strategic planning, the safety and security of our passengers and employees, without question our top priority and also to effectively manage our resources from both streams, passenger revenue and government contributions. We also focused our attention on our reservation system, new frequencies, and new schedules for our long distance trains in Western Canada in order to enhance the passenger experience. And the attention of all these initiatives is really to enhance the passenger experience for our Canadians and also of tourists. Uh, Embrace Vision 2025, supporting the management team as Via Rail takes on great challenges and works towards the best path to success. Au nom de mes collègues, je tiens à remercier tous les employés pour votre générosité et votre in the name of my colleagues, I would like to thank you all for your passion and your tireless work, and I would like us to give them a good hand of applause. Because as administrators, we can guide, we can supervise, but hats off to all the employees who work tirelessly day after day with devotion and professionalism to really reach the success of Via Rail, rather on board in our stations, in our maintenance centers, call centers, or offices. Your pride and dedication form the foundation for the exceptional service that Via Rail is known for. It, it is only thanks to you that we have achieved such remarkable results. To introduce to you our new president and CEO and the first woman to serve at the highest level of a rail company in Canada, Cynthia Garneau. Cynthia has now a long history with Via Rail. That must be her 12 days because she started on May 9. She is, though, a seasoned transport and aerospace industry executive and no stranger to high stake challenges. Lawyer by training, she was, before joining the team here, president and chief officer of Bell Helicopter Textron Canada. She held technical and management positions in the aeronautics sectors. Dans l'aéronautique, en français, plus facile. Led teams and spearheaded complex projects in a number of sectors. She definitely is prepared to meet our organization's challenges. 
Je la laisserai vous présenter. I will give her the opportunity to present her vision of things at Villarreal in a few moments. Let's just say that her abilities for teamwork, innovation, and implementation of large projects will be very important to us facing the scope of our projects linked to sustainable transport and the future of Via Rail's modernization. Cynthia's guidance will be crucial in driving us forward. All of us will work hand in hand with her and the Ministry of Transport to continue advancing our projects as seamlessly and efficiently as possible. Aware that her, su her success will be our success for all of us. Cynthia, you can count on us, and we are delighted to welcome you aboard, and I give you the floor. Thank you very much, Francoise, and thank you to all of us, uh, to you here in the room, and also those who share this uh, session through webcast. Well, to have joined VIA team and look forward to working with you all to make VIA relevant for all Canadians. Et vraiment, quel meilleur moment? And really, what? A better moment to join this important corporation. As mentioned by Francoise, the interest in passenger rail is a fact, especially in the Quebec City Windsor corridor, which represents 95% of our ridership. In 2018, the number of passengers in the corridor has increased by 9.3% compared to 2017. This popularity gives us the necessary momentum to continue our efforts of modernization as we are moving forward in the renewal of our corridor's fleet. The start of the year demonstrates that we are already well underway for 2019. VRL is transforming. And I certainly intend to stay the course on this objective. Our modernization plan entirely reflects our vision to offer Canadian a safe, comfortable, and responsible mode of transport. And this transformation draws on a very strong foundation, thanks to a remarkable workforce who for more than 40 years have been contributing to make what Via Rail is today. Since my arrival, I've had the chance to meet many employees, and I was really impressed by the diversity of experience and abilities and talent of this team, whether they're at the maintenance center in Montreal or the call centers or at the uh, control center or here at uh, the main office. I am convinced that together we will be able to rethink our way of doing things to be able to answer even better the needs of our passengers. And I would also like to say hello to all of them right now and see you soon, those who I haven't met already, because this summer I will be traveling all over the country to really get to know all of you better. Thanks to you, we're already well on the path that we want, and it is that of success. And I would also like to thank and say hello to my predecessor, Yves Desjardins Siciliano, for all the efforts deployed to create Via Rail's solid progression. Of these modernization initiatives, I'll start with several changes that have been made to our information technology systems that will improve, for example, the management of our crews and equipment, as well as modernizing our reservation system. We've also re uh, renovated several of our stations throughout Canada to bring them up to the 21st century standards. And finally, as mentioned by Françoise, we've added new frequencies and schedules for our long distance train in the, in the West. I was about to say in the US in the West, and to reduce delays and improve the travel experience for our customers. And let's not forget the fleet renewal for the Quebec City-Windsor corridor, the renovation of our older cars, and our great project of high-frequency rail. This 
project is complex and ambitious, and we continue to work with Transport Canada to capture its scope, to mitigate the risks, and identify the best way to allow millions of passengers to benefit to benefit from the accessibility, the comfort, and the travel experience they have come to expect when traveling with Via Rail. As you can notice, our modernization is well underway. With my experience in aeronautics, whether it be in manufacturing or in conceptualization and concrete realization of innovative projects, one of my priorities will be to ensure the continuation and execution of our projects by working closely with my management team and the whole team of Via Rail. And I would like to introduce to you my management team right now. Marc Beaulieu, Chief Transportation and Safety Officer. Linda Bergeron, Chief Human Resources Officer. Mario Bergeron, Chief Mechanical and Maintenance Officer. Anne Boutillier, Chief Communications Officer. Sonia Corriveau, Chief Transformation of Business Officer and responsible of our HFR project. Patricia Jasmin, Chief Financial Officer. Martin Landry, Chef Commercial Officer officer and responsible for the fleet reunion, renewal, Jean-François Legault, chief legal, legal and risk officer, and Robert Saint-Jean, chief asset management officer. Leaders, I will have the opportunity to do what I am most passionate about, fueling the power of a team by creating a collaborative environment that allows us to have an impact on our employees, our communities, and in the how we work, we live, and we travel, of course. But I feel really privileged and fortunate to step into this role at a time where our society is asking for a change and expecting that we continue to innovate and to offer more sustainable transportation solutions for passengers of all modes. As a matter of fact, this was and continues to be a primary innovation focus for the aerospace industry where I come from. But VIA is extremely well positioned to shape the future of sustainable mobility in Canada. And I am thrilled to have a role in this journey, if only for my 12-year-old daughter to be able very soon to travel throughout Canada in a way that will make her feel confident about our future. Because everything we're doing, the foundations that we're laying today will propel Via Rail toward a more sustainable and very promising future. So now, before I give the word to Patricia Jasmin for the financial review, I would like you to show you one of the ways by which we would like to transform the experience of Canadians, because we would like to make transportation as accessible as possible for Canadians. And I will show you a video presenting a pilot project close to our hearts, a project in collaboration with the International Union of Railways, aiming at allowing people with visual impairments to move autonomously in stations. Thank you very much. So we started at the beginning of the year with a question. How could we help the blind and the partially sighted to navigate a station autonomously? So we're here today to move forward in the next step in our collaboration with UIC. We're testing two different technologies, beacons and a mobile app and a sonar wristband to help the blind and the partially sighted navigate the station autonomously. I'm really, really excited to have you uh, here today. I'm excited uh, about today. It's a milestone day for us. This prototype is important because it's also directly linked with our long-term vision for Destination 2025. And Destination 2025 is a sustainable vision. And within that is accessibility, accessibility for all passengers. More than about the solutions, 
This is about the relationship. This is about the journey together. We want to succeed together. We want to misstep and screw up together. And the goal of today, the heart of today, the core, is to get at their feedback, how they use the tools, when they use the tools, and what is going to push those tools further to enhance their experience. So remember, this is in very early stages of development, but what we're looking for here is feedback on the experience. How are you feeling? Is it uh, overwhelming? Is it just, we want descriptors as much as possible. I'm listening for the ticket counter. Five o'clock, 28p. I'm in waiting area one and two, and I want to get to four and five, so I think we got to go along this way. I think we're here. I'm at the right area. I'm at gate four and five in this big, huge place. I found my way to the place that I need to be, so that's, that's always a good thing. I love it. I love it, man. It's uh, empowering. One more tool to know where you are, and it's like coloring in the world. First, I'd love to hear reactions. I love the, the amount of information, and it's great because it kind of fills in a picture, lets you know what's all around you. About 30 paces back, you hesitated a bit. Yeah, because I wanted to point it at the wall and see. I could see that the wall was there. I really wanted one of those wristbands. After trying it out in the station here, I said to myself, oh, I could use this technology everywhere I go. If this technology was perfected, I would feel great. I'm already using similar technology outdoors. I'm using GPS to help myself find my way around outdoors. But when we get indoors, we don't have it. What we've discussed today in implementing the beacons and uh, navigational tools uh, is very important because I think it's the next step to making a fully accessible station. My hope is that today is a significant milestone on the way to contributing to an international rail standard so that passengers in all countries across the UIC can benefit from this and we have a universal standard for the lived experience of the blind and the partially sighted. And what would you say if we were giving you one of these wristbands today? <gasps> really, though? <sighs> I think that's the cat's pajamas. Really, I would love that. I think oh, that will make our life so much easier, yes. If we can perfect what we uh, started eight months ago in the future, that will mean that I can comfortably walk in the front door and, and board the train myself. Nothing would give me more satisfaction than that. Bonjour, je me présente. Good afternoon, I am Patricia Jasmine, Via Rail's Chief Financial Officer. I am delighted to be here with you today to share the financial results from 2018, which was another pivotal year for Via Rail with positive financial results and the approval and launch of our fleet replacement project. Results were very positive with increases of 7.4% and 8% respectively compared to 2017. This performance is the result this year again of the enhanced cycling of our trains and the optimization of capacity to better align with customer demand. Dans l'ensemble, les revenus de Via Rail pour 2018 se sont élevés à 
Overall, Via Rail's revenues for 2018 increased to $393 million. This amount includes passenger revenues, which reach $369 million, and an additional $24 million of station and third-party revenues. The revenue increase is attributable to an enhanced service offering, including additional capacity through optimized cycling in the corridor, as well as higher average fares for most major train services. Our operating expenses before pension and benefits cost total $633 million, a 6.9% increase compared to 2017. This growth stems in part from the added capacity deployed in the corridor, as well as the additional cost related to on-time performance issues and the adjusted schedule of the Canadian service, which runs between Toronto and Vancouver. Total 33, 32, sorry, million dollars in 2018 compared to 38 million in 2017. This decrease stem from the improved performance of the pension plan, which result in lower cost for past services. Les charges d'exploitation totale de 2018 se sont donc chiffrées à 665 millions de dollars, ce qui représente une The total operating expenses amounted to 665 million for the year, which represents a 5.4% increase compared to 2017. VIA received a government operating funding of 272.6 million dollars, which is 7.3 million or 2.8% higher than in 2017. In 2018, the government subsidy represented 43% of our overall operating expenses. This is an improvement of two percentage points compared to 2017, meaning that Via Rail reduced its dependence on taxpayer dollars for a fifth consecutive year. That was one of the goals Via Rail set for itself, and we are very pleased to have achieved it again this year. Now in terms of capital investments, a total of $123.8 million was invested in improving service for passengers. The biggest investments went to the following projects. $36 million in the HEP modification projects, including our corridor capacity protection program. $27 million in infrastructure projects, mostly for track and bridge rehabilitation. 19 million in information technology projects such as the reservation system, Wi-Fi optimization, and access security control system. 18 million dollars for station projects with the most significant investments in Ottawa, Oshawa, and Toronto Union Station. And finally, 14 million invested in our maintenance sensors reflect the success of Via Rail hard work in the past few years. We have continued to modernize and improve our service, and we are thankful to the passenger who support us every day. And now, thanks to the Government of Canada, this modernization will continue. As previously mentioned by my colleagues, we have initiated our fleet replacement project. We are excited and proud to know that we will, in the next few years, be able to offer Canadian a more comfortable ride. Merci. Thank you. Day traffic. Oh, another good move, passing all that weekend traffic and looking good. See, he said I look good. On aime ça, dépasser le trafic de fin de journée sur ton vélo. T'as du style? Oh, ici aussi, à dépasser le trafic de fin de semaine avec ta belle chemise. Tu vois, il a dit belle chemise. Oh, good move. Trying that food truck before you leave for a weekend at Danny's parents. I'm meeting your parents? At least the way there will help you relax. They're gonna love you. On aime ça. Essayez un nouvel endroit juste avant de partir pour le week-end avec les parents d'Alex. Je vais rencontrer tes parents? Au moins, le trajet va t'aider à relaxer. Puis ils vont t'aimer, voyons. Good move. A run before that presentation in Ottawa this afternoon that you haven't finished or even started. I got this. Working on the way. 
Well played. On aime ça. Jogger avant de partir pour Ottawa, même si ta grosse présentation n'est pas terminée. T'es pas stressé? Non. <rire> Travailler en chemin. Hmm. Bien joué. So, as a Crown Corporation uh, dedicated to serving Canadians, it's very important for us to hear from you, the public. Our annual public meeting gives us the opportunity to do so, and at the same time answers some of the most popular questions uh, you send us. Along with the invite to participate today, we ask you to send questions about you had about Via Rail. Once again, your response showed us that you were very much interested in what's happening with our corporation. Many of, of you uh, were curious about the same topics, and certain questions were asked multiple times. So we, once again, chose the top most asked questions and submitted it to submit them to a vote. And we selected the top 10 questions uh, that you had. So today, I have with me the president and CEO of Via Rail Canada, along with some members of the management committee, who will answer uh, the questions that you have for them. So the first question is for Mr. Marc Beaulieu, who's our chief transport uh, officer. Monsieur Beaulieu, bonjour. Bonjour. Hello, Mr. Beaulieu. What is the status of bringing trains back to Gaspé? So the infrastructure on which the trains go on I, the Gaspé region belonged to the Quebec government in uh, 2013. We had to stop passenger uh, rail because uh, it was not safe for passengers in 2018. The Quebec government has announced work in order to repair the tracks in the Gaspé region. So we want to uh, return to service in the region as long as the tracks are safe and that uh, it, they will go all the way to Gaspé. Uh, with Greyhound no longer offering service to Western Canada, is there any way Via Rail could help? For example, uh, between Vancouver, Kamloops, Edmonton, Calgary, or maybe Winnipeg, Regina? So we, we fully understand the impact that Greyhound pulling out of service has on Western Canada people that, that live in those communities. Uh, we, we already serve 130 communities in Western Canada, and, and although we always want to look at options to serve new routes, we, we are not at this time able to have the resources allocated to entertain any more services. So we'll continue to serve the 130 communities for which most don't have other options than train services, and we'll do the best that we can for the, the communities that we are serving. Last question for you about the Canadian this time. What is being done to improve the service, the frequency, and the reliability of the service out west? So as we know, it's been a very challenging environment to operate in Western Canada, where we share uh, the tracks with lots of freights. The, the freight volume has increased tremendously. Of course, that's because our economy is doing so well, so there are some big challenges there. In the last couple of years, we've been adjusting the schedules as best we can to better serve the customers, and we fully understand the impact that the late trains have had on our employees and our customers, so we've worked very hard with the infrastructure owner to find solutions to that. So we have uh, started a new schedule as of the end of April, and, and it is promising because the on-time performance has improved greatly, and we'll continue to work with the infrastructure owner to put whatever other improvements we can in place to keep it as a sustainable project. The, uh, there's been so many improvements uh, necessary for that train, and, and we have now accepted to operate two full frequencies between Vancouver and Toronto, and the third one only to Edmonton, to allow the infrastructure owner to spend another $400 million on improving the fluidity of their infrastructure, and we fully intend on returning that third frequency all the way to Toronto next year in the spring. So uh, we will be doing the best we can with the infrastructure we have, and we'll keep working to keep it sustainable. Thank you very much, Mr. Beaulieu. La prochaine question s'adresse... 
Thank you very much, Mr. Beaulieu. The next question is for Robert Saint-Jean, Chief of Assets at uh, Virail. Used uh, on the ocean. So uh, <clears throat> in the budget of 2017-18, the Government of Canada provided VIA with fundings to uh, renovate long distance trains. So the program is underway and uh, we will deploy these uh, renovated trains in our long-term services, including ocean. Thank you very much. La question suivante. The next uh, question is for Commercial Affairs Chief, Mr. Martin Landry. Uh, Mr. Martin Landry, certain of our passengers are asking why are Via Rail's fares so expensive? Thank you very much for the question. It's an excellent question that I hear regularly, so it's a pleasure to be able to answer. So I'll give a bit of comp text to start. We have a direct link with the pricing strategy and also the value of client expectations for a passenger, whether it's comfort on board the trains or the what we offer to our clients, like Wi-Fi that we offer uh, for free to all the clients in Quebec, Windsor, and also the ocean trains that uh, link Montreal to Halifax, as well as the excellence of our a service uh, through the call centers, the employees in our stations, and onboard service. So we think that the rates, the fares really um, reflect uh, the value and quality of our service. Now, in terms of affordable fares, that is something very important for us, and that's why maybe I'll leave you with three suggestions to find uh, the best fares possible on our trains. First of all, uh, make your reservation as early as possible. Uh, the fall, we've established our best uh, fares for a client who can book um, 21 days or more ahead to find the best fare. The second suggestion is a bit of flexibility if possible. So to look at the train schedules and potentially if the traveler has a certain flexibility to enjoy a train in the middle of the day or the middle of the week instead of uh, using uh, the fullest uh, trains uh, during the uh, busiest times uh, like Monday morning or Friday end of afternoon. And the other is to use uh, the many promotions we have uh, uh, like the ones we have at this moment uh, for 2019 vacation period in the summer, or also to enjoy uh, the Rebate Tuesdays. Uh, every Tuesdays, Via Rail offers many interesting promotions uh, for uh, the passengers, and in almost all cases, the type of transportation on Via Rail is... Uh, Mu the cost is much cheaper than what uh, gas would cost uh, on the same uh, for the same distance. So if you're interested in our promotions, I invite you to go to vrail.ca and also to subscribe to the newsletter. Means be added in the southwestern Ontario in the near future. Well, as most of our services uh, depend on our ability to access third-party infrastructure. Uh, it is uh, no different in southwest Ontario. We've seen significant interest uh, with our current services. As a matter of fact, since 2016, our ridership has grown by nearly 20%, and that's off the exact same service that we've been offering over the last three years. So we would like to evaluate how we uh, are able to provide additional services, but it's solely dependent on working with our partners, both the infrastructure owners and the intermodal partners, uh, to evaluate uh, access to infrastructure, uh, but we don't see, unfortunately, in the very short term, the ability to add services uh, to a region that we believe uh, shows great potential for additional train services. Merci beaucoup. La prochaine question. Thank you very much. And the next question is for Sonia Corrivo, Chief of Business Transformation. As uh, you know, we, were, we live in a very connected uh, society now. And the question is, when will onboard Wi-Fi be improved and will it be possible to watch streaming video on YouTube, for example? 
Thank you. So I'm very happy to say that in 2018, VR Rail invested considerable amounts uh, to update the Wi-Fi position on trains. 65% uh, of our cars have uh, uh, been upgraded, and the initiative continues for 2019. As for the possibility for uh, streaming video, we cannot offer this function yet. Uh, because of the limit of broadband that we have, it would uh, reduce the Wi-Fi experience for most passengers on board our trains, and this is why it is not an option right now. Thank you very much. Now, if we stay in the same uh, line of thought. Will online booking include choosing your own seat in the future? Yeah, unfortunately, this is the questions that we've had often in the past. Um, the current reservation system does not allow that functionality when there is online booking. So um, I'm very pleased to say that we are right now working on a new reservation system. So the reservation, the actual one will be replaced and we will be in the positions to offer that functionality. So it's long awaited functionality. So it's coming. Great. Thank you. The next question is for our CEO, Madame Garneau. You were talking about high-frequency rail in your speech a little bit earlier. What is VIA doing in order to reduce the amount... Oh, I'm sorry. That was for Saint-Francois, going too fast. When will construction on high-frequency rail begin? Well, the good news is that we are making progress. The feedback that we're getting from the government, from our communities, from... Uh, our customers um, is really, really uh, positive and encouraging. Even, you know, for the past two days, sitting with our board of directors, uh, it was a big topic of interest, uh, briefing the new directors on it as well. Everybody is really engaged and, and believing and behind this plan because we are really convinced that HFR will transform the passenger um, rail service for Canadians by connecting more communities by offering more departures, uh, improving the travel time, the on-time performance, and of course, it's adding brand new trains as well at one point soon. So um, it's really uh, a great project. It will also be using the existing infrastructure that we know, uh, and also existing uh, right-of-ways, and all the way from Quebec City to Toronto. So it is really an amazing project. Is mais vraiment il s'agit d'un projet it is really, but it is a complex project, an ambitious project that really requires that we look at it uh, phase by phase. At this point, uh, we should be able soon to start, for example, the phase of environmental analysis, uh, of discussions with our communities to look at all the social acceptability issues. And for this step, we're working very closely with the Canadian government. But I can tell you that uh, this is a project uh, that really has uh, the government's attention. It's been uh, the object of many of my conversations with Transport Canada in, uh, my la in the few days I've been in this position. So it really shows that it is important for all parties involved. The last question is for Jean-Francois Legault, who is our a chief legal officer, but also risk management. So as you know, we also live in an era where people are worried about climate change and the environment is at the heart of their worries. What are you doing in order to reduce the amount of one-time use plastic used on board its train? So uh, Mariana, thank you for that question. Uh, it allows me to talk about our approach, uh, which we've had for quite some time now, relating to three R's, right? Reducing, uh, recycling, and reusing. Uh, so obviously, uh, reducing our environmental footprint is at the heart of our sustainable mobility strategy at VIA. And one example that I can give is uh, last year, we proceeded to a life cycle analysis of all the different products that came on board our trains, not only our uh, one-time uh, plastic usage products, but all products, to better identify alternatives on how we can manage those products from sourcing, so at the beginning of life of those products, all the way to uh, residual management. Um, one example also is uh, replacing plastic straws and steering uh, sticks with uh, paper or wood products. So that's one of the elements that came out of that uh, analysis. 
Uh, obviously, Canadians know that uh, we are procuring a new fleet. We're at the design phase right now of that new fleet, and so obviously uh, enhancing our, uh, uh, the environmental protection is important, so we're looking at how we can better design the interior of our cars to uh, enhance our sorting uh, capabilities. Um, and uh, at the end of the day, being able to better manage uh, uh, these products and reduce our waste. Merci beaucoup. Alors, ça complète notre période. Thank you very much. This ends our question period. I would like to remind you that, of course, we haven't answered all your questions. But on the website, in the next few weeks, you will see the answers to your main questions. We will also be available in the next few days in a translated uh, version. So those of you who would like to see it again will be able to. Alors, voilà. Merci beaucoup aux uh, membres. Thank you very much uh, to the management members uh, to have uh, participated to this uh, question period. And now we will now give the floor to our uh, cet, uh, cet événement. Thank you very much, and thank you very much for this. I'd like to thank Françoise Bertrand for an amazing speech. Really, she uh, captured the essence of what VIA is all about and, and how it is uh, uh, paramount to have a board that supports our vision uh, like you do. So I want to thank you all, also members of the boards, for, uh, for, for this amazing past three days where I learned tremendously about our business, about you, and about how it is that together we can continue to make a, a bright future for VIA. Uh, I want to thank Patricia. I want to thank the management team uh, for their input today. I want to thank you, Mariana. Thanks. Thank you to all of our employees. Again, I say à bientôt. Um, and thank you for the public. Thank you for your interest. And uh, we hope, of course, to see you uh, again in 2020. Au nom de tous les employés. In the name of all VIA Rail employees, and uh, for me personally, thank you very much for your participation and have a very nice evening. <laughs>